In this second film we're going to show you how to combine two plastic kits, paint and weather them. This time we'll be looking at combining the country station with the station house in double scale which are both part of the many ways lineside range from Pico. Before you start modelling you need the right tools to do the job and we recommend the Pico Tools Kit Builder's tool set, the PT200. Again for this plastic kit build we will use liquid polyurethane cement, two Humbrol enamel paints and a selection of acrylic washes from light to dark grey, dark green, brown and white. Inside the box you will find your kit and instructions which you may need to keep to one side for reference during your build. But if you intend to combine your kits together like we are going to today you may wish to pay more attention to this film. Remove the station house from the plastic bag and lay it out. For this film, keep the contents of the two kits separate for now, but work on them in parallel. First of all, start by removing all the components from their mouldings. This can be done with a pair of plastic cutters or a Stanley blade. Remember to keep the two kits and all their components separate at this time. Then take each component and remove any plastic burrs or rough edges from all the kit's parts using a Stanley knife or a file to clean the edge. Now you have prepared all your components for both kits you need to bring the walls together and lay them out in the desired configuration as shown here. Because we are combining kits together some of the doors and windows will not be required I would recommend using a pencil to mark out the windows and doors that are no longer required as fitting the windows and the doors may cause the walls not to come together as desired. Now you know where the two end walls of the station building marry up with the station house buildings, you will need to file away the set off at the bottom of each facing wall as shown here. It's important to do this to get a snug fit. You also need to trim the roof of the station building only at the end of each section. Using a section of wall, mark with a Stanley blade and then use the rule and apply more pressure to remove the excess plastic as shown here. Take care when doing this. By removing the overhang, the walls of all the buildings will fit flush together. Don't forget to use a pin vise drill to make three holes on the platform side of the station building to fit the canopy locating pegs. I now recommend you glue the doors and the windows to the walls of the building and then followed by the window sills with the chamfered edges facing up. Again only where required, not where adjacent walls sandwich together. Glue the four walls together for the two station house buildings ensuring the corners are square. This can be done by using the white lines on your cutting mat. I would also recommend using blue tack balls propped against the walls to keep them upright until the adhesive has dried and set. And repeat this process with the station building and separate toilet block. Back to the main station building. Getting this bit right is very important. Glue the two main roof sections in place making sure the narrow roof section marked Pico on the back is placed the same side as the canopy roof will be fitted, otherwise the canopy roof will not fit properly. Then taking the roof ridges and place them on top of the roof, then file off the ends so the walls of the roof are flush with one another. At this point you may wish to install either a sheet of plaster card or a piece of cardboard from the box as a floor between the ground floor and the first floor in your station houses. Measure and cut to size using a rule and a Stanley knife. Then apply glue to the station building ends to attach them to the station house buildings as shown here. Take care and patience when doing this as you want your building to sit level. And then repeat with the other end. Now attach the toilet block to the desired end. Once the buildings are firmly together, attach the station house roof on each end and then attach the roof ridges as well. 
assemble the chimney pots and give the red brick a white wash. When the wash has dried, then paint the chimney pots with Humbrol Enamel Matte 100 Terracotta and the slab they sit on with Matte Grey 140. Again, with the white acrylic, wash the brickwork all over your building. You may wish to do this many times depending on the look you wish to achieve. Remember to allow each coat to dry before applying another if desired. You can also use yellow or light grey depending on the colour you wish your brick mortar to be. Now apply the dark grey acrylic wash to the roof and when dry in different patchy areas with different variants of light grey. And again when dry apply dark green in a patchy manner. Paying attention to the corners and other damp sheltered areas of your structure Add a little of the dark green acrylic to attenuate where moisture would linger. Once dry, attach the canopy to the main station building and add all the fascia boards and chimneys, gutters and downpipes. When the adhesive is dry, I then used brown acrylic wash and applied liberally to the top of the gutters to give the impression they needed emptying or cleaning out. And there you have it a finished building ready for your layout. You can make all manner of alterations and colour schemes, heavier or lighter weathering to meet your desired look and requirements for your layout. Even change the building's configuration or combine multiple kits to build an even bigger building. The sky is the limit. I hope you enjoyed this kit build from Pico TV, and I look forward to seeing you again on another kit build programme in the future.